The self-complementary nature of DNA allows each of the two strands of a parental DNA molecule to serve as a template for the formation of a daughter strand. This process is called DNA replication. However, the replication of even the simplest DNA molecule is a complex multi-step process involving several enzymes. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the difference between the leading strand and the lagging strand. Understand the functions of several DNA replication proteins. And understand how the DNA replication machinery is able to copy two anti-parallel strands simultaneously. Many proteins are involved in replication. These proteins include DNA helicases, single-stranded DNA binding proteins, topoisomerases, primase, DNA polymerases, sliding DNA clamps, RNase H, and DNA ligase. DNA helicases are a class of enzymes that couple ATP hydrolysis to the separation of DNA strands. The DNA helicases involved in replication are typically hexameric proteins in the shape of a ring. The junction between the newly separated template strands and the unreplicated double-stranded DNA is called the replication fork. The replication fork can be looked at as moving continuously toward the unreplicated double-stranded DNA. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins, or SSBs, bind to the single-stranded DNA to stabilize the separated strands. As the DNA unwinds, the twist number decreases. Therefore, the writhe number must increase, causing the DNA to become positively supercoiled. These supercoils are removed by topoisomerases. DNA replication requires an RNA primer to begin. Primase is a specialized RNA polymerase, which makes short RNA primers using single-stranded DNA as a template. Primase is activated by association with other DNA replication proteins, such as DNA helicase. The synthesis of DNA is catalyzed by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is only able to add DNTPs to the 3' end of a polynucleotide. Due to the antiparallel nature of DNA, one strand is synthesized continuously toward the replication fork, while the other strand is synthesized discontinuously away from the replication fork. The continuously synthesized strand is called the leading strand, and the discontinuously synthesized strand is called the lagging strand. The lagging strand will be discussed in the next section. It takes approximately one second for a DNA polymerase to bind to DNA. However, once replication has begun, DNA polymerases are capable of adding up to 1,000 nucleotides to the growing daughter strand every second. The ability of an enzyme to catalyze many reactions before releasing its substrate is called processivity. To increase the degree of processivity of DNA polymerases, a sliding DNA clamp surrounds the DNA and binds to DNA polymerase, holding them together. Remember, DNA polymerase can only add DNTPs to the 3' end of a polynucleotide. Because both DNA strands must be passed through the replication machinery in the same overall direction, the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously in small fragments. The short fragments of DNA formed on the lagging strand are called Okazaki fragments. Note, Although the Okazaki fragments are shown as very short stretches in this animation, they are usually between 100 and 1,000 base pairs in length. To complete DNA replication, the RNA primers must be removed. RNase H specifically degrades RNA that is base paired with DNA. The H stands for hybrid, as in RNA-DNA hybrid. The single ribonucleotide directly linked to the DNA is removed by a separate exonuclease, which varies between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Removal of the RNA primers leaves single-stranded gaps in the double-stranded DNA. 
These gaps are filled in by a DNA polymerase. Finally, the NIC between the 3' prime hydroxyl of the repaired section and the 5' prime phosphoryl of the replicated section is repaired by DNA ligase. In bacteria, the two DNA polymerases responsible for replicating the leading and lagging strands are linked together in multi-protein complexes called holoenzymes. How do two DNA polymerases remain linked? and yet synthesize DNA on both the leading and lagging strand. The trombone model explains how the replication machinery might exploit the flexibility of DNA to accomplish this task. According to this model, the single-stranded DNA template for the lagging strand pulls through the DNA polymerase, similar to the slide of a trombone. This flexibility allows the DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to the 3' prime end of the growing lagging strand. The DNA, the DNA polymerase holoenzyme also contains a sliding clamp loader. This multi-protein complex loads sliding clamps onto the primed DNA. The sliding clamps help the DNA polymerase find the primed DNA and then help increase the processivity of the DNA polymerase. Do you understand the mechanism of replication well enough to keep a cell alive? In this game, you will find out.